I'm very excited about our presentation today. Um, I have Brent Oliver here with me. I'll read his bio and then he will introduce the folks that he has with him as well. Brent Oliver is an ANCC board certified family and psychiatric nurse practitioner and healthcare improvement scientist. He has been a multiple sclerosis specialist and neurobehavioral subspecialist in active clinical practice since 2006, and currently practices at the Concord Neurology Multiple Sclerosis Special Care Program. Dr. Oliver is an assistant professor at the Dartmouth Institute and the Giesel School of Medicine at Dartmouth, adjunct associate professor at the MGH Institute of Health Professions School in Boston, and one of only 18 faculty senior scholars in the United States for the VA National Quality Scholars Fellowship Program. He co-directs the Northeastern United States VAX program site in Vermont. His interests include integrated improvement in implementation science research, healthcare improvement education, and improvement of health professions educational services quality. Recent research grants on which Dr. Oliver serves as principal investigator included Peer Facilitated Network Wellness Outreach Program grant from the Multiple Sclerosis Foundation, which he will present on today, a research grant from the National Multiple Sclerosis Society to study national outcomes of MS care delivered by nurse practitioners and the MS Continuous Quality Improvement Collaborative, the first national multi-center healthcare improvement research collaborative for multiple sclerosis in the United States. So welcome. Thank you for the kind welcome. It's a, an honor to be here. Um, and I'd like to thank all of you for uh, supporting philanthropic uh, initiatives at Concord Hospital. Um, the most important people in this presentation today are actually sitting behind. Uh, what I'm going to present to you today is uh, a type of wellness outreach program that is not run by the clinicians. It's actually run by the people with MS both the people participating as mentors and mentees. This is a peer wellness outreach program concept that started off very small a number of years ago, funded by a very small grant uh, from the Multiple Sclerosis Foundation, a uh, very small uh, uh, program grant of $10,000, and we just started off very small, pairing up people with MS who had an interest in helping others with MS achieve better wellness. And there's a lot of detail behind that, but the bottom line is that that's how that program started off. And it's really grown organically into something very special. Um, so uh, instead of me introducing each of our panelists, I'm going to have them introduce themselves very quickly. Um, the way this presentation will go is that I'll spend just about 10 minutes giving you the overview of uh, the type of research that I do, and especially about this program. Uh, but the rest of the time is going to be their stories. Uh, we presented this panel at the National MS Society regional meeting uh, just down the way at the Raponi Center in Congress uh, this fall. And it was the first program in that, in that series I've ever attended. Uh, I've been going for about 10 years uh, now that participants asked for extra time. We had an hour session and they said, can we extend this to two hours? We want to talk to these guys. They didn't really care about me. That's the scientists like, get out of the way. Let me talk to these guys. Uh, we'll do the same thing. So a little bit about the science, but then more so about uh, what really matters uh, to me. You know, when you're a scientist or a clinician, at the end of the day, it's about the people. Uh, and that's what we're all here uh, about today. Uh, so with no further ado, I'm going to pass the microphone to our panel. And then after I introduce the panel, I'll go into a brief introduction. Okay, my name is Kathy Rollis, and I'm from Ossipee, New Hampshire, <laughs> way up in the White Mountains. And my participation in the program is um, that I'm a mentee, and so Bonnie down there would be my mentor to help me figure out what I can do to promote the um, wellness in my life. So I have a bigger story to tell, but right now I'll just be brief. <laughs> Hi, I'm Debbie Boucher. Team of program also. My name is Willie Um I come from Manchester, New Hampshire, and I use the program to go to a place called Project Wall. It's been an awesome um, experience. Hi, my name is 
is Bonnie Norton. Um, I started the program probably three years ago as a mentee, and now I'm a mentor. I've been mentoring, mentoring uh, probably uh, up to like eight mentees now, and Kathy was one of my mentees. And so I benefited from the program, and um, and I can help out you now to share my knowledge of what a gift it is, and then to give to others. So, and I'm also uh, from London here in New Hampshire, so I kind of meet halfway with my mentees. And that was Andrina, and she had called you free. Hi, my name's Amy Hall. I am um, the program manager for the, for the study and or for the group. And I, Grant loves to tell people that this is my favorite program that Grant does. I just enjoy working with all of these people and it's, it's so fun and they're a lot of fun. And um, I, I'm very fortunate to be able to be part of it. Thank you, everyone. When Andrina comes back, uh, we'll introduce her. She has to take an urgent call. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you. Let's do a quick introduction to this program. So I think you've already heard about this part. Can everybody in the back hear me OK? Is that coming through? Yeah. OK, excellent. Um, my mission uh, as a scientist has been to improve MS care outcomes. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Uh, some scientists focus on creating new drugs, new medicines. Uh, others work on uh, improving uh, frontline clinical care. Um, others work on completely redesigning systems of care to get better outcomes and to give people more control over their own health care. Um, my particular work has focused on the latter part, uh, really empowering patients, uh, redesigning healthcare systems to get better outcomes. Um, and I'm going to focus on just one of those. Uh, the the uh, MS Improvement Collaborative is uh, one of the studies that I've been working on. This is the first uh, of its kind in the United States. Um, other illness conditions like cystic fibrosis and uh, inflammatory bowel disease have done this. They pair together multiple sites from across the country that treat the same conditions. So in this case, we've got multiple, multiple sclerosis centers, many. Uh, all participating and contributing information to what we're learning. And the idea is to learn the very best practices and then uh, disperse them across the collaborative and figure out what the, the best possible care approaches are for multiple sclerosis. Uh, so that's one body of work that's going on. Uh, the other is that in chronic illnesses like multiple sclerosis and others, there's often no one best treatment and it can be very confusing and uh, complex uh, uh, situation for people when they're trying to choose a medication or a treatment that's best for them. There's an approach called shared decision making which can help. Uh, this is uh, something called an option grid which uh, helps patients and providers talk about different treatment options. Actually developing those specifically for all the sclerosis. The exciting part though for today is this program. Uh, this is an example of what's called a patient facilitated network. Um, and some of the new cutting edge models uh, in something called co production, uh, where the idea is that healthcare is not delivered but actually shared between patient and provider. A uh, very different concept of healthcare delivery. Um, in these patient facilitated networks, the patients rather than the providers drive from us uh, and uh, uh, approach uh, something, uh, a different way of finding help. Uh, rather, instead of defining it as an illness-based concept, we define it more in terms of a wellness-based concept. And wellness can be very different for many different people. So it's not about having the best hemoglobin A1C level you can have, the best cholesterol level. It's about attaining the best wellness in your life, regardless of what illnesses you have. Whether you have um, diabetes or multiple sclerosis or inflammatory bowel disease, uh, the, the science behind this is that you can maximize your wellness regardless of what medication you use. So the MS Wellness Outreach Program was designed for a number of reasons. Uh, in rural New Hampshire, there's a lot of barriers to access to services. 
if many of our patients drive more than two hours to get to us, uh, many more than an hour, and we have wonderful wellness services here at the hospital, but many can't access them regularly. And so if you live in a rural or underserved area, if you're a long way from, uh, from here at the, at the hospital, oftentimes you can't access wellness activities like uh, yoga, or tai chi, or college classes. Uh, so we sought to mobilize the wellness effort. Instead of bringing people to us, we bring the wellness to them. Uh, and by using our grant funding to allow people in their local area to use that funding on local-based services, uh, that was a key aspect of this program. The other aspect that you're looking at right here, uh, instead of uh, professionals or clinicians delivering supports, uh, the clinicians guided a team of peers, people who have MS themselves, who want to serve as mentors. Mentors and mentees then pair up and develop individual wellness plans for each of the mentors, and they pursue them together. And so if you think about your own life, and if you've ever tried to make a behavior change, you know, tried to go on a diet or tried to exercise more, right? Easier to do it if there's somebody asking you about it. Hey, Grant, it's time to go to the gym today. Oh, I really don't feel like going to the gym today. You said you'd go to the gym today. Okay, I'll, I'll go, I'll go. You know, or we will have a cup of coffee after the gym. So mentors and mentees engage in the wellness activities together. Sounds like a simple concept, right? Well, so is Alcoholics Anonymous, right? The most effective rehab approach for alcohol. And that's that pair bond between the mentor and mentee that drives that progress. A severely powerful addiction, right? Alcoholism. But having that sponsor supporting someone who's trying to quit drinking is really a powerful thing. And so in designing this program, uh, myself and others uh, uh, that uh, engaged in this type of research thought, oh, can't we, can't we employ a model like this for wellness? Uh, and especially in a rural outreach situation, pair that with sending resources out to patients with MS. Uh, so this program does that. We pair people with MS with a mentor who also has MS and is trained as a Concord Hospital volunteer and also in National MS Society and peer advisor. So they get some training and supported by an MS clinician. And then they go out and connect up with mentees, develop an individual wellness plan, and then that plan has to be reviewed and approved. Uh, funding can only be used if there's financial need and if it's a wellness activity. So it's not replacing standard medical services or uh, you know, things that could be paid for by insurance. But it can pay for things like yoga classes or for uh, a person who wanted to write again. Uh, we've got Dragon software so they could actually do voice recognition. Uh, for another person who's being able to go and do work, work in a metal shop. For another it was uh, Classes. So wellness is broadly defined, uh, and the idea there you know, faces, uh, uh, is based on this idea in psychology that we call self-efficacy. If you have a central driver, a central motivation in your life, you're more likely to be able to self-manage your confidence. Uh, so uh, a lot of the tenets of this program are based on scientifically uh, derived concepts established in research. Uh, but after we designed that framework, we then stepped back and allowed the mentors and the mentees to shape the program. Uh, our grant funding has come so far from the Multiple Sclerosis Foundation. I would say that we're still a small grant funded uh, entity. Uh, we've received less than $100,000 in funding so far. Um, I think our total funding has been about 60000 so far. Uh, but with that funding, uh, all of our staff and overhead is all volunteer. All the grant funding has gone directly to patients uh, for their uh, wellness activities. And this year we received an extra grant award from the MS Foundation to continue the work. Um, interestingly, I was just sharing with uh, Deanne, this work has been invited uh, for a presentation at an international conference in two weeks. I'll be traveling to Sweden uh, to present on wellness outreach programs. Uh, they were so impressed with what the mentors and mentees have done in this program uh, that they want to hear those stories. Uh, so it's definitely growing over time. Uh, here's some uh, examples of the individual wellness plans. Uh, we've had uh, uh, assistance to dogs, Pilates classes, personal training, yoga, nutrition, hobby workshops, um, the dictation software, uh, assistive devices that weren't covered uh, by other approaches. 
uh, and uh, also programs like Power Walk. Uh, the key thing is that it has to be linked to the personal wellness plan. So it can't just be a random activity. It has to fit into the person's individual concept of what wellness is. Uh, we have been tracking our outcomes. Uh, it's, this is not a formal research study, but these are opinion surveys uh, that we uh, track and that, uh, for people in the program. Uh, overall, contacts with peer mentors have been uh, consistent and sustained. Uh, and people are completing their individual wellness plans. You know, one of the potential problems with a program like this is if people don't do their wellness plan, it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, so we're finding that the peer mentors have been very effective in helping individuals complete their wellness plans. Um, how often do you participate in activities? Um, there's a few people who uh, didn't remember what their <laughs> wellness plan was after they completed it. Uh, but uh, the majority are doing it two or more times a month, uh, which is really good, especially when many people didn't even have a plan to start with or are not doing much uh, uh, at baseline. And do you feel that participating in the program has improved your overall wellness? Overall, uh, very, very good. It looks like the, uh, the numbers there didn't translate over. Uh, cell range uh, should have been a number there. 80%. Okay, good. Um, but the bottom line, I think, you know, I could put graphs out in front of you and numbers and statistical analyses. Uh, but the part that I think will matter mo most to you is hearing the stories. Um, I'll share one before handing off to the group. Um, I had followed a young woman with fairly severe multiple sclerosis for a number of years. Uh, and part of her symptoms was cognitive impairment. And this is a woman who had tried three times to complete a GED degree and had not completed her high school education. And uh, she meets Bonnie in this program, and about eight months later, she got her job. Yeah. yeah. So when we think about what the potential of a program like this could be, it's beyond changes on MRI scan or beyond relapse rate reduction or medical outcomes. It's about a young woman having a chance to get a better job and have more mobility in her life. And a volunteer did that. A very low cost uh, <laughs> program, right? And and the cool thing is, is that this is how the mentors feel after they do it. And what we're finding is that people are signing up to be mentors. They're not getting the grant funding that it's going to the mentees, but there's such an intrinsic reward to being involved. And for many of the folks with MS who are not working full time or not working at all, um, it's really a, a, an incredible. Um, experience for them to be able to guide others for tools. So it, it seems like it's a it's a type of program that is rewarding to all. And especially to Amy and I because we just sit back in the staff meetings and let these guys drive. And it's amazing what they're coming up with. In many cases, I mean, and this is a characteristic of an effective facilitated network, people who live with the condition are better than the system in finding outcomes. Uh, and, um, Kathy's story, which she'll talk about later, she wanted to find a power assist bike. Um, we couldn't find her a bike that was through the system, that we could, uh, that was affordable, insurance couldn't cover it, other things couldn't cover it, and through the, the peer facilitated network, we actually found an affordable option that the grant could do. And it was because of people who knew people, who knew people within this network, and many of whom who had lived with multiple sclerosis for a good portion of the world. Um, so the, the reason why I put that out there is that we ended up actually saving money. If we think in terms of how the economics of healthcare works, if these peer facilitated volunteer networks can find people options that are effective for less cost, that's kind of a big deal. And the biggest deal is this. Kathy gets the money now. And she'll tell you more about her story. Uh, but this was a really big deal. This was something she really enjoyed, an activity she did with her friends and family, and uh, including the younger generation. Uh, so at the end of the day, that's that's my measure of success uh, for this program. So we're going to shift now to panel discussion. Some of the handouts you have, I think you have uh, three handouts. Uh, there's a single page uh, description of the wellness program that a patient would see if they were handed this in, in clinic. Uh, there's a newspaper article from the Union Leader that came out in October about the program. And what was the third one? Oh, there's only two. Okay. So only two. That's even better. Less reading. Newspaper article and the one-pager on the program. That will be circulating while you listen to it. 
Um, for the panel discussion, I'm going to invite first Andrea to introduce herself. And then for the panel, I may guide the discussion just a little. Uh, I'd like you to share your stories, but also to focus on the following questions. Uh, the first question is, what does wellness mean to you? How has the MS Outreach Program fostered facilitated wellness for you? How do you think peer mentors make a difference in wellness and population health for people with MS? What surprised you about the program? And what should potential donors know about the program? Uh, so I'll hand it off to the panel, uh, beginning with Andrea. Hi. Hi, I'm Andrea. First, I want to apologize for stepping out. I am a single mom, and that was my daughter's doctor. She hasn't been feeling well, so I apologize. Um, I started in the program probably over a year ago now as a mentor. I um, kind of grew up with MS. I was diagnosed really young. I was 23, and MS was different then. He wasn't lucky enough to have people like Dr. Oliver and Dr. Cabot um, around when I got diagnosed. So I've um, wanted to be, uh, I know how I felt when I got diagnosed, and it's been important to me to find newly diagnosed people and give them hope. Because when I got diagnosed, I felt like I was being told to go home and sit in a corner and do nothing. Um, unfortunately, at the time, they didn't know much then. And I was told to quit my job, which I never did. I worked full time. I took a vacation day, so I'm not skipping out. <laughs> um, I was told I would never have children because I would be too tired. My daughter was born a year and six days after I was diagnosed. And I was told not to exercise because if I got too hot, it would be a problem, which I did have a little bit of problems, but I've earned my second degree black belt in Muay Thai kickboxing. Oh. And at 42, I still compete in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So <laughs> I've always felt like the need to tell people it's not over, it's not the end of the world, everybody has something. and. We just need to find ways to work around that something. And um, one of my first mentees was a young girl. She was um, just starting college when she got diagnosed. And it was before I knew about the wellness program. And I had her come to my house. And we started working out and just you know, doing yoga and things that I knew helped me deal with fatigue. And uh, we did that for about a year. And then we joined the wellness program. and. Um, as part of me helping her, I convinced her to do the MS Mock Fest, which was to raise money and to help others like us and raise funds and awareness. And doing that was the first time she came out when she was going to help others. And she told people what she'd been going through for the past year. And I kind of empowered her and helped others at the same time. And we had been training and working out to do it. So all about the wellness. And part of this program, I was introduced to Deb, and uh, Deb's been amazing. And her goal is to improve her gait, which Emma is trying to steal from her. And she wants to do it without medication. Um, so she's found on her own this amazing facility uh, called Project Walk that is helping her meet her goal. So, and she's able to do that with funding through the grant. So we really appreciate everything. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, no, please do. Uh, this is the good stuff. Um, I didn't really uh, talk a little bit about how much funding and how we do it. Um, every mentee gets up to a thousand dollars, and some of that funding can support the mentor if they're going to activities. So, say for example, if a mentee wants to do yoga for the first time but is nervous about it, the mentor can get coverage to go with them to do it together. Um, so again, the uh, grant is directly invoiced, so patients don't have to pay out of pocket. As I said before, my name is Bonnie, and I was diagnosed probably about six years ago, but I think as many people with MS, uh, when they're diagnosed, they figure I probably had it for 30 years, and looking back, there was some symptoms a long, long time ago. and. Uh, and when I first got diagnosed, I really was got that deep depression, and you know, I'm not me anymore. And who is this? I can't do. 
I was always Miss Bonnie. I was the assistant director of the child care center, running around doing this and that and discipline and giving tours and everything. And then just over time, I could hardly stand up walking down the halls and 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 I had to go part time. And then finally, I had to leave my job. And then. I um, was talking to my uh, neurologist, Ann Cabot, and, and I wasn't feeling at my top, at, um, at my best, and she told me about Brant's Grant, <laughs> and that's, we joked around about Brant's Grant, and, um, and the things that might be able to, I might be able to do to help out my, my spasticity and my, my strengthening my my limbs and things. So um, then I was selected to be a participant of the grant, and um, I was paired with a mentor, and that was probably three years ago. And um, we met, and we had coffee and a nice conversation, and we met several times. And and then I decided I wanted um, a gym membership. I, it, you know me, I have never had a gym membership in my whole life, but I knew. This is something I wanted to try to get strong and um, be able to, at least, I, I thought, if you don't use it, you lose it. So I just wanted to maintain what I had, and and, and then I got some massages, which helped with the muscle spasticity, and then after that, I really was feeling good. I, I um, see Carolyn, my mentor, uh, for different functions, and she'd say, wow, you're looking good. I said, I'm, I'm feeling good. You know, it was, it was just such a positive feeling to be out there because now my social emotional being was, it was just boosted and I had something to live for. I, I went out to the gym and I, and I exercised and I just, overall, I think when anyone exercises, you feel good right there to begin with. And then seeing people at the gym and just, talking and, and I don't know, I'm babbling, I'm sorry. So then after a year's time, I, I talked to Brant and I said I want to become a mentor. And since then, um, I think I helped, I'm on my eighth uh, mentee, helping out um, with people find different wellness plans and it could be um, from yoga to uh, an assisted bike to um, uh, there was other gym memberships, uh, and there was so there was just many. Again, again, I have a mess, and I still remember. But um, I just feel like I have a purpose now, and this has helped me not only physically but emotionally. I enjoy meeting up with these people and keeping in touch over the phone, emails, texting, and it's just. I, volunteering has been really good for me, and I just will continue to do it as long as I'm asked to, I think, and I can't, I'm sure I will, after. <laughs> check, check. I'll just add a quick comment about this idea of self-efficacy. A lot of the things that Bonnie was talking about fit into that term. And interestingly, self-advocacy has been linked to less hospitalizations, less use of medications, less needing of rehab services. And that all sounds good from, from a like, system perspective, but when you think about a person's life, if you don't have to take as many meds, you're not paying as much money out of pocket. You have less side effects, um, and you have more pride in what you're doing. And all that time, you're not going to get to engage with all these services and medications. You've got more time. So this idea of promoting this self-efficacy thing can turn into some very, uh, would you say, tangible things. I, I agree. I think that's a good point. Hi, I'm Debbie. I'm a mentee. I'm using the program to go to Project Walk. Um, I was diagnosed with MS probably 20 years ago. And then shortly after that, I got bitten by a tick and I also got Lyme disease which they're telling me at this point basically um, progressed the disease. Because when I was first diagnosed, I really didn't have many symptoms. The Lyme disease 
never was taken care of either. So now I have chronic Lyme along with MS. And over those 20 years, it's just deteriorated me in a lot of ways. Um, and last year I had to retire on disability. So this last year has been hard, but becoming a mentee in this program has been awesome. As I've been trying to like work out, you know, and do things to help myself. And Project Walk was just, um, they really pushed me. I've been in physical therapy a lot over my life, pretty much constantly for different things. And I just never got what I've gotten out of Project Walk from physical therapy. I just don't think they focused enough on what my problem was or they just, they probably are good for like general things, but when you have a, a chronic disease, I don't think they really are used to dealing with people with that. That's my thought. I don't know. But Project Walk is much more focused on people who have chronic um, illnesses and they're, um, and I don't know if anybody knows them, uh, this woman, Victoria Arnold, she was just on Dancing with the Stars and she basically was a paraplegic at one point in her life and she can't feel from like her waist down and they helped her walk again and her parents own this Project Walk because she went to one, I guess, that was in California and there was nothing like that in this area, so they brought it here, and now they run it. Um, it's a great organization. They really push you. That was another thing that I get from them is that most of the people that I've come across, doctors, physical therapists, told me not to push myself with MS, that I would hurt myself. And talking to Andrina, <laughs> You know, she was like, no, I pushed myself. She told me she, was, she used to exercise till she went blind so that, that she knew that she was getting a good exercise, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I was, it, I had to ask a lot of people when I went there and they were saying, no, no, push yourself, do it. Because I had asked another physical therapist if I could go cross country skiing and he was like, oh, no, don't do that. This man that I'm seeing there said, yes, go. Do whatever you want to do. He said, it's good for you to push yourself. It's a good thing. And so he's got me into the um, frame of mind that I'm going to push myself. because I, And I do push myself, but I don't push myself as much as he pushes me. He, when I go there, I pay for a day or two, but I feel like I'm gaining um, Strength for one thing, and uh, stability. Uh, like I don't, it doesn't take me as long to recover from exercising, stamina. Um, so it's just it's been a great experience, and I've met Andrina, who's become a great friend, uh, and we have so many similarities in our disease. It's great to talk to somebody in my shoes because doctors are wonderful, but they don't have time, and they also it's, everybody's so different, they just can't possibly know all of the things that might be something that would help you, or when you tell them that you have this particular problem, they might not know or have heard of it, so they just don't really know what to do with you. But when you talk to somebody who's in the same boat as you and has had that problem, they can offer you suggestions as to how to help yourself. So it's been a wonderful program. Right. So because of this program, they've been paying you to go. To, which and hopefully they're looking to be covered by insurance. So hopefully they will, because I will run out of some money. But I feel like he's given me enough to go with that, even if when it has to end, I'll be okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for that excellent story. Um, I'll make two quick comments. Uh, one is that it's now known in MS and other chronic diseases that more exercise equals less fatigue. Uh, and some of what is in Columbus has been the experience of the patients. That's one of the strengths of what this patient facilitated network is. We're learning and experiencing together. And that can also have policy 
say for example, the project one, there is something that we decide to advocate for on a policy level. You know, we can bring this network to bear to push for insurance coverage. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any sort of insurance is a hard thing to have one of my uh, mentors, I did my graduate training at Dartmouth. Uh, one of my uh, mentors was uh, improving on the top of it. And uh, he often said that um, every system is perfectly designed to get the results of this. And everybody's trying to do a good job. They just don't always know what job they're doing. Right? And, and so you know, we think about you know, being a clinician myself, it would be humbling to hear that we don't always have the right answer. But I would argue that if we engage a patient facilitator, get closer to the right answer because many times the patients themselves have the right answer. Um, you know, in your case, you found an answer that worked for you. We just needed to find a way to facilitate that. Um, the other thing that's might come up is like, oh, how do you make sure that you don't engage in something that isn't going to be up in harmless? We have monthly staff meetings, which I attend and other clinicians can participate as well, to provide some feedback as we talk about these different models before we approve them. Uh, like, for example, if someone recommended B-scene therapy, uh, we probably wouldn't recommend that because we don't want based on the MS course. So we do have that consultative mechanism to make sure we don't do any harm. Uh, but at the same time, we have a very open mind to these things. So my name is Kathy, and um, I grew up in Ossipi in the mountains. And I was diagnosed with MS in 1996. And of course, it devastated my life at the moment, the diagnosis. And I was a nurse at the time. So I just thought, well, you know, I don't know. I guess I'll just uh, go for it. <laughs> well, to make a long story short, um, because MS is a progressive uh, neurological degenerative disease, it eventually took its toll and I had to go on to disability in 2005. And it's a really great um, brochure that the MS Society puts out that says, but you look so good. But all of these subtle, um, uh, I mean they're not subtle for the person that has MS, right, is that um, you have a tendency to get depressed, which is a well-defined symptom of MS. And also, you can't, you don't have the stamina that you used to have. And then I couldn't multitask any longer. So maybe I wasn't actually needing a wheelchair, but I was fighting all of these symptoms. And um, it was progressing in my cognition. I would get overwhelmed and couldn't do the bills as easily. And, and then I um, began to see Brandt and for the depression and those feelings of cognitive overwhelm, feeling overwhelmed. And he said to me at the time, I think you would be a really good candidate for this wellness program because I had always been pretty physical and hiking and I just couldn't do that anymore. And um, so I said, all right, well, what's that about? And then he told me briefly the program. And so I was assigned, thankfully, to Bonnie, and Bonnie and I met at Panera Bread, and I told her my story about I was going on a bike trip every year with my very, very, very good friends to Martha's Vineyard, and we've done it for 30 years, and um, such great friendships we've developed, but as my MS progressed, I could no longer ride my bike. So, because of my balance. So I said, well, I think maybe what I'll do is just get a three-wheeler. So I rented a three-wheel bike from Northeast Passages out of UNH there, which is a great program. And I brought it on my bike trip, and I was all excited. And But then my stamina was now challenged. And so I'm riding my three-wheel bike, and I can't make it up even the slightest hill. So... I got pretty discouraged about that, and then I said, all right, but that's all right, I'll figure it out. So when I went home, I said, I'm going to get a bike that's not only three-wheel, but it's a battery-operated bike. And, oh my gosh, they were so expensive. They were like 2000 or more. 
So I told this story to Bonnie at Panera Bread, and she said, <coughs> she picked right up on it, and she said, you need a bike. That's what you need. I'm like, okay. So, yeah, so she brought her laptop to Panera Bread, and we researched all of these bikes, and um, they were pretty expensive. And so we went home, each of us, knowing some idea, but she would call me, which is really the whole success to this program. She would call me and say, so how you doing, Kathy? And being a procrastinator that I am, <laughs> oh, good. Well, what sites have you been on to look for it? And uh, I, so I would tell her, and then I couldn't find one. So anyway, she found a program, not a program, a company that had the bike that was um, three wheels, battery assisted, with a basket on the back for a thousand dollars. Which this program, <laughs> yay, Bonnie! I had a mission. Yeah, she she was on a mission. And so it got delivered to my house in a box with a lot of screws and everything. And so my two sons came over, they live in Concord in Manchester, and they opened the box on the living room floor and they put the whole bike together for me, which was an awesome experience to have them, for them too, to be feeling like they're helping their mom uh, do something really successful. And so that year, I went on the bike trip, and the really nice feature of this bike is that you um, activate the battery only when you need it. Therefore, when you're riding your bike, you're getting lots of exercise, but then as you come to a hill or something, which is where my stamina never lasted, I would be able to go up, and my friends are like, we want one of those bikes. <laughs> had a big basket on the back, and then I think you saw up there um, the picture of me with my grandchildren in the basket. Um, my mother would have a block party at um, the 4th of July every year, and all they all went around the block in their costumes, and I could never do it. It was about a mile and a half. And then, um, my this, this makes me emotional because my um, grandchildren, came over and said, Nana, are you going to come with us? And I said, well, it's a long walk. And they said, well, why don't you use your bike and we can go in the basket? <laughs> so the two of them sat in the basket and uh, I went all around the block and now I can go on my bike trip. And But the thing that made this so successful was Bonnie's support because it's the human connection that happens. I mean, I could get $1,000 maybe from some place that would you know, support that. Yeah, yeah. But to have that connection with Bonnie, and we both have MS, and she knew exactly, she honed, she's really gifted at this. <laughs> she honed right in on what would be good. And what it's done too for me is it's got me out of the house. Now, now that there's snow, I can't obviously ride that bike, but it motivated me to take the clothes off the exercise bike. <laughs> <laughs> at home, the stationary one, and now I'll ride that through the winter so that it will motivate me to be strong enough to ride that other bike when the nice weather comes. And um, I just, I can't even say how much this program has meant to me because it really, uh, just to get us together, when you live in Ossipy in the woods, there's not a, you know, a, uh, what do you call those places you go to? Uh, gym, a gym. There's no gyms nearby. <laughs> yeah, see how I don't even know what they are. <laughs> and even I'm a mile, three quarters of a mile to my mailbox at the end of my road, and um, the kids now want to go get the mail with me. So they get in the back of the basket and everything. And like Brant said, there is a um, well documented and researched how much exercise helps. MS makes you stronger and and the human connection obviously I mean any of us I'm 63 now so I was starting to feel like I would just stay in the living room and do the exercise on TV which I could have done and I did it once <laughs> but yeah but the connection of a person through this program it, it can only make it 
so successful because it's it's awesome to have Bonnie and, and all of us have all grouped together and everything. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you uh, for all these stories and I don't know how much more time we have, but we can continue for as long as you like. Um, I noticed two really interesting things watching this. Uh, my role in this is to facilitate the support while they develop the program. Um, they run the staff meetings, they lead the program. And when things like coming up with, let's find a bike for Kathy, um, the whole group goes at it. Uh, and other mentors chime in, they say, you know what, check out this resource, or look into that resource. I'm going to check into this for you. And the best that we could do at the system level was twice as much as what we could find with this, this support here. Um, and it's just, you know, my wife asked me whether I had a good day at work after coming to a staff meeting with this group, and the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they really uh, have come together as a group to uh, be very effective. Um, the other thing I've noticed is I'm, I'm a mental health practitioner within the MS clinic here. And the people that go into this program don't have to come back to see me. <laughs> is, that's a very interesting outcome. Uh, and when we think about the fact that you know, most of the time we're prescribing medications and doing counseling, and that's very important work too. But imagine if we wouldn't have to do that. And people wouldn't have to feel what the pressure feels like. Uh, you know, those approaches So that's that kind of And if you notice, excuse me, uh, most of them, I can talk about them. <laughs> can, you, can you hear me? Right. Uh, most of our stories started out, I think, with the word depression and you know how I felt because someone said I couldn't do that. And then I think this took away a lot of this and, and just boosted us all up. And, and I'm, I'm really depressed. Sorry, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are times when I'm happy not to see you. <laughs> <laughs> but in a good way, right? Because if people don't have to come in to see me for uh, depression, they're feeling better, they're doing better. Um, and that's the goal we want. We want people to feel well. Um, you know, and certainly, you know, we're here today to share that story. Uh, there's uh, many programs uh, above this type uh, across the country uh, that are, are finding success. Uh, this is one of the few that I know of of this kind for multiple sclerosis, uh, especially in this area. Uh, so we're looking to expand the program. Uh, we need more funding support to do that. Uh, but certainly, uh, we, at, our, at the level we're funded right now, we'll be able to expand it modestly and we'll continue to do that. Our hope is that our mentees will become mentors and that will help us to continue to scale the program. Uh, and so far, that's what we've seen. Um, in terms of, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, can you share with the group how many mentors and mentees you have or have had since the project began? Sure. Um, and you know, if you think about the total funding we've received, um, you know, it's $1,000 per mentee. Um, so it gives you a sense we've had you know, less than that amount of, uh, of mentors and mentees. But I think we're somewhere along the line now of over 20, 23, 24 people who participated in so we're still pretty small scale, but if you think of that we started off with three, uh, it is expanded, especially given the fact that everybody here uh, is, and myself included, is all participating volunteer. Every cent of what we bring in goes to the benefits uh, for the people participating in What would you do with additional funding? Do you expand this program, or do you have other? Sure, the, the question was, what, what would you do with additional funding? Uh, first and foremost, we, we would scale it. Uh, we have more people than we can accommodate. So that'd be goal number one. Uh, but goal number two is that National MS Society is interested in funding with larger dollars if we can show pilot data. Uh, so additional funding would help us get the pilot data to get the big grant that would maybe take this you know, regional or national. Uh, so I think that would be nice. Too. I understand that the program really works with the person-to-person -person connection. Do you see that ever working on a virtual basis? I'm just thinking my mom's in Florida. I know she doesn't have access to a program like this, but I think in some ways, even if it's on a video chat or phone, texting, the emailing, do you think that would be helpful? I, um, I actually work remotely for a company in Ohio. So just in terms of I think you can connect with people virtually because you still have that 
sorry, you still have that face-to-face. Um, so I know that I'm able to connect with people virtually, and I think, and I've done a lot of, um, I like to do yoga, but my balance was off a lot. I don't like to fall in public. It's just not my thing, and I, I don't have partial vision, so group classes can be challenging for me. So I did a lot of workouts myself at home. I used each body. But I wasn't successful at it until I joined the Facebook group where I could actually have accountability. So I see that this program could absolutely work virtually because it's more of the, hey, did you work out? I didn't see you post today. What's going on? Did you go for that walk? Um, I'm in other groups online. Uh, I was taking a medication for my MS and it was fairly new when I started. Um, and a patient had started a Facebook group and you know, has anyone experienced this? So I see a lot, and, and the, I mean, the world is changing. You know, I have a teenager, and social media is huge, but I definitely think this type of program and this model could work. I think it's more, connection can be anything. You could be sitting face to face, but when her and I text, I think our connection is just as strong. And then if you feel the same way, like, it's even as simple as, hey, how'd it go today? They can use that. And then when she texts me, hey, this is, I know I'm like, oh, I'm so excited you had a good day. You're feeling good and you're feeling strong. I feel good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one of the things I glossed over early on was um, the MS Continuous Quality Improvement Collaborative, that first multi center uh, effort in the United States for MS. Um, our goal is to replicate what cystic fibrosis. Uh, they have 110 centers throughout the U.S. And you imagine with that kind of network, you can pair a tech option with your suggestion with local presence. So you could be talking to your mentor in Boston, live in Florida, and then you have your resources available right next door to where you live. Uh, we might be able to mobilize something like that. So being virtual, the, one of the things that I thought was really cool about it is that my husband videotaped me coming down the driveway and doing all these things and going to the mailbox and and uh, so now it's on video and so my friends, um, my daughter-in-law's father called me and he said, my cousin just got diagnosed with MS and um, would you be willing to talk to her? And so I did and I called her and then I told her about this program and then I showed her the video, of course, online, uh, attached to our email, and she was just felt so much better, like her spirits and everything lifted up, uh, just to see a, such a successful program. And one last point I wanted to make is that um, when you go on the National MS Society walks and everything, they're awesome, and the MS Society is awesome. But what's really unique about this program is that it's locally, uh, not, I don't want to use the word local, I want to use the word, um, no, it's the, it, it's living day to day. I'm making your life better. I mean, well, the MS Society obviously is looking for a cure, but that probably won't be in my lifetime. And... What's that? Oh, it did? Oh, all right. So my point about that is I could wait for a cure or I could live my life every day now going forward. And this program helps bring quality to the life of people that are living with a chronic illness. So it, it's an awesome thing. I think it's you meet your original goal or find your wellness plan with your mentor but then it builds there's we have a connection we still I mean when did we we started two years ago but we're still in contact and like a bad penny just keeps showing up and then um there are side effects so I'm saying yeah. But um, he was saying with another um, one of my mentees, the, the GED, I mean, I, when he said it again, I got goosebumps. And to have that connection with her and knowing that 
Brandt had told me she might be a little tough one, but we just, she she texted me this morning and asked me if she could use me for a reference on a job application. I'm like, yeah. yeah. And it just, we met for lunch to celebrate. I said, you get GED, my treat. She just, when you have a good connection, and this is all through texting, email, phone calls, face to face, all of it. It's just, Keeping the connections, just not that here, here's your gym membership, see you later. It's that bond, it's that the mentoring, sticking with. Uh, I don't get benefits, uh, I didn't get the benefits just for being a mentee. It it lives on being a mentor. I, I think I get more from being a mentor. I have, like I said, I have eight people that I've connected with and one in which wants to be a mentee now. And, and another one, after she finishes her wellness plan, I think she wants to be one too. And it's just, it's so rewarding. And it's it's socially exciting. Um, it's done a lot for me emotionally. Like I said, I can't say enough. This program has done a lot for me and all of us, I think, in different ways, many different ways. When, when I hired uh, Amy, she had to uh, step out. We've been asked by um, the National Quality Forum, which is funded by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, to uh, study a new quality outcome measure in multiple schools. So she had to take that call. I didn't want to leave. Um, you know, when you think about what makes your day, this is what makes your day. Uh, when I hired Amy to do the national studies, that study's okay, but this one, I, I really like this one. Uh, and so she, she is actually doing this program volunteer as well. Uh, it's just a very uh, inspiring group, and they often say, oh, Dr. All, what a great program you designed. I, I really can't take credit for this program. You know, I might have facilitated and got the initial grant funding, used some science to frame it, but it's heart and soul is in the people. Uh, they drive the bus, um, and there's a growing thinking in healthcare that they can advise the healthcare system in the future. Uh, this in a very small scale is doing that. So, um, I imagine we're at time, or do we have a little more time? Do we have any more? We'll take one more question. Do we have any questions? I think I was just, I was just going to thank you all for your time. It's really wonderful for you to share. It's, it's not always easy to share your story with strangers, and we definitely appreciate it. All they're touching, and I've heard you here the whole hour. <laughs>